Red Sox spring training continues to roll on, even though they got their undefeated streak snapped. All good things must come to an end, though, right? But we do have good news on Justin Turner, Chris Sale, Garrett Whitlock, and some other injured Red Sox players. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a special Sunday episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar, because if you are looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all of those calories, then Built Bar is something you have got to try. Built Bars are so good. They don't have that cardboard taste that a lot of other protein bars have. They have flavors for literally everyone. My personal favorite, you know by now, is cookies and cream, but they have brownie batter coconut almond, there's peanut butter, there is a flavor for everyone in your family and in your friend group. They're also very lifestyle friendly, their macros are very good 130 calories, four grams of sugar and 17 grams of protein. And maybe you're wondering, Lauren, what makes built bars so good? It's because they're covered in 100% real chocolate, all of the bars 100% real chocolate, the built puffs 100% real chocolate. And now we've talked for the last two years that you can go to built.com and wait for the Bilt Bars to show up at your door. You no longer have to do that because if you head on over to your local Walmart, go right over to the pharmacy section, pick up a box of Bilt Bars. You can have them right then and there. Or if Sam's Club is closer to you, they also provide the 13 bar box. So if you go to Walmart, if you go to Sam's Club, you can still go to Bilt.com, but just make sure you get yourself some Bilt Bars. I am your host, Nessens Lauren Willand. I am flying solo today. Jake's in Atlanta for work. But it was a busy week for the Red Sox. We did see their spring training undefeated streak come to an end. That's okay, though. It's spring training. These games are fun. These games do not matter. And obviously, I don't think the Red Sox were really going to go undefeated for the entire spring training. It would have been awesome. Do not get me wrong. But we, I think we knew in the back of our heads that losses were coming. Losses were bound to happen. And again, it is to be expected, and it's fine. So going into Sunday's spring training game, they've lost their last two, 2 nothing to the Toronto Blue Jays on Friday, and then a 4-3 loss to the Twins on Saturday. But you, there is some good news on the injury front here, and we have some good things coming out of the World Baseball Classic, who are representing the Red Sox there. That tournament is so much fun, and you, can just, you clearly can tell the players are very much enjoying themselves. It is just a lot of fun baseball going on right now, especially with Mazataki Yoshida and Yu Chang. But let's talk some injuries before we talk about them. Chris Sale, who's a big storyline going into the 2023 season, made a start on Saturday, and he looks pretty good, especially his slider. You have to go look at it if you haven't seen any highlights of it. Just go on Twitter, type in Chris Sale slider. It will pop up. It looked really, really good. And Alex Cora told reporters after the game that he thought Chris Sale looked really good. He used all of his pitches and he was very sound mechanics wise. It was a good one. And now we move on to the next one. So I think it was a very strong, solid outing for Chris Sale. And he was excited about it. He was carving up the twins. He had three very, very efficient innings. He had only 32 pitches And MLB.com's Ian Brown, friend of the pod, Ian Brown noted that of the 19 swings Minnesota took, Sale induced eight whiffs. So a very encouraging outing from Chris Sale. You know, he's recovering from the pinky, the wrist, the, the rib injury. He was just riddled with injury last year. And it's a lot of question marks surrounding him and if he will be healthy this year. But seeing this outing on Saturday was incredibly encouraging. He had his family there. He also did not give up any walks and he had five strikeouts. And his final pitch of his outing was the fastest of those three innings. It was just over 95 miles an hour. And then Ian Brown also noted that Sale went out to the bullpen to throw a mock fourth inning. So he still had more juice left in his arm. He still felt like he could go a little bit longer. And he took that momentum and he threw himself a mock inning. So I liked what I saw from Sale. And I think it's a good start. Again, this all has to translate into the regular season. We know this. But to see him come out, be really dominant on the mound, even if it's just for a few innings. I loved what I saw from Sale, and he was working very, very efficiently, and he had some extra motivation in the stands. He said that his son's t-ball team was in the stands for for Saturday's game, so he wasn't allowed to suck. So something, a feel-good story there. 
And he also said after the game that he feels good about where he's at currently and feels good with his command. And that all looked to be true on Saturday. So very encouraging from what we saw from Chris Sale. Hopefully that goes into his next start and hopefully that continues to build a strong, healthy Chris Sale. And that goes into the regular season. He can be the ace of the staff. He can be a serviceable starter for the Red Sox. He can stay healthy. That's the biggest thing is he needs to stay healthy in 2023. And we know he's going to put the work in to do it. And hopefully it it stays. Hopefully he does stay healthy. I want to see a healthy Chris Sale for 2023 because he is so, so good when he's on. And the Red Sox know this. And we've known this before he even came to Boston. So I'm I'm happy with what we saw. And I think that fans should be encouraged by, by what we saw. And as always, you know, cautiously optimistic surrounding Sale. One good start does not mean he's going to have a great 2023 season. But it's an, a great starting point for him to be to look this good in his first start. Now let's just keep building that momentum and go into the regular season. Justin Turner, who got hit in the face, was a scary scene. It was unclear if he was going to be ready for opening day. We still don't quite know if he will be ready for opening day. But Alex Cora said on Saturday that Justin Turner could be taking bat- batting practice on Sunday. So I'm recording this Saturday night. So by the time you listen to this, he might have already taken batting practice. He might already be in the cage right now, but it's a very, very good sign. He's getting his stitches out. He got 16 stitches in his face when he was hit against the Detroit Tigers last week. Very scary scene, but thankfully he did avoid serious injury. So that's always a good thing. So it sounds like he will be ready for opening day. Of course, you have to get the stitches out. You have to start taking swings. Who knows if there's going to be any sort of anxiety Getting back in that plate, I'm sure, you know, he's a veteran, yes, but it's not every day you get drilled in the face with a baseball. So so he's walking away, fortunately, with some stitches, some swelling, probably some gnarly bruising. But overall, it's very, very good news on Justin Turner. I think that – I don't think they're going to rush him at all. I think they're going to make sure he feels 100% that his face is okay, that his mental state is okay, that he's just going to be okay going forward. And I'm excited to see how his batting practice goes I do think we'll see him in the lineup. Alex Cora has said, you know, we have time and we're a little over three or a little under three weeks away from opening day, which I cannot believe we're saying it's so, so close. So I do think he will be in the lineup, especially with no fractures and no serious injury. So that's very, very good news all around. And then there's Trevor Story who, no, he will not be ready for opening day. That is not a surprise to us, but we don't know if or when he will return to the Red Sox this season after going the modified Tommy John surgery on his UCL. So Haim Bloom has said that, you know, we can't bank on him coming back. Trevor Story is confident he will come back. And we did see a really positive step in his recovery over the weekend. He did field grounders for the first time since his elbow surgery. And Alex Cora saw that as an encouraging sign that they'll be able to get him into the lineup at some point in 2023. Alex Cora did tell Ian Brown that it gives, it gives the Red Sox hope. And he said, if he's not thinking about playing this year, then why take ground ball so soon? He wants to be a baseball player just like everybody else. He's engaged and he's excited to take that step. It means a lot. It's a good first step. And Trevor Story told Ian Brown that it's huge. You get to that point where you feel like just a rehabber. To get out in the field and take ground balls and feel more like a baseball player is really good and something I've been looking forward to. So it was a very good first step for Trevor Story. You know, he wasn't doing pregame drills or anything like that, but he was taking soft grounders. He was making sure that he wasn't pushing himself. He wasn't throwing the first or anything. So it was very, very positive to see, especially we don't really have a timeline on this recovery. And we've talked about his injury and there's an unknown timeline because the surgery is just not very common among baseball players. But I do think that it's very, very encouraging to see that he's taking ground balls And he's just kind of getting his body back into baseball mode and just kind of keeping his body moving. And there's, I mean, he had that huge brace on his elbow and there's only so much you can do to make sure you're not irritating it. And not just with working out or staying in baseball shape, but around the house and they have him and his wife have a a young baby. And you think about how many times a day you use your arms, just like reaching up. Like I, I move my arms a lot. When I talk, if you watch the YouTube videos, you probably see my hands come in and out of the frame, but just something like my elbows are bent right now and just I pick things up all the time. I, I type for a living. So just for him to get out there and kind of get back to a routine is super, super huge. And I don't think this means he's going to come back in May or June. I don't think we're going to see him until 
either right before the all-star break or after the all-star break. And that all depends on his recovery. If he faces any setbacks, we hope that there's not, but you just don't know in a surgery like this. We still have a few injuries to touch on Garrett Whitlock, Brian Bayo, And we also have to talk about what Yoshida and Chang are doing in the world baseball classic. We will do that in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast after I tell you about LinkedIn. If you own a small business, then these days every new potential hire can kind of feel like a high stakes wager for your small business because you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. Well, that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and it's free. I found my job at Nesson on LinkedIn. You can find so many jobs. They always have jobs posted and you can post your job for free. There are so many young professionals using LinkedIn a lot more to network and to make connections and hopefully find a job that fits their needs. And it's a great way to vet your candidates as well. I've had a lot of success on LinkedIn and it is so easy to post your job. You All you do is create a free job post. Then you add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. So when someone finds your profile, they know that you are hiring for the job that they want. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and eventually hire. I know it's only March. We still have months to go before we think about closing out the new year strong, but you want to think about that. You want to think who your candidates will be long-term if you will have the right candidate to help you close out the year strong. LinkedIn will help you do that. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So sticking with the injury theme here, Garrett Whitlock and Brian Bayo both are a little bit behind schedule. Garrett Whitlock just recovering a little slower from the hip surgery than they thought. He would, and then Brian Bayo was dealing with the forearm tightness and was shut down for a little bit. But they are both progressing very nicely. It's very good news on the both of them. On Saturday, Garrett Whitlock threw two innings of live BP. He threw 46 pitches, and reporters down there were saying that he didn't look like he was facing any effects from that hip surgery. So that's another good step for Garrett Whitlock. We don't know if he'll be ready for opening day. Alex Cora has kind of alluded to that he doesn't think he will, but... 46 pitches, looking good, looking strong, I think is a great step for Garrett Whitlock. And again, the day after throwing your live BP and the the day or two after following that are the most important. You could feel good after, but the next day you could be like, crap, I am so sore. My hip hurts. Hopefully that's not the case. And hopefully he can just kind of keep on this trend. And Brian Bayo, he threw two innings of BP on Wednesday and he will make his first start, his first spring training start sometime like March 19th, March 20th, around there. So a a couple more days to go, a little over a week to go until we see Brian Bayo on the mound. But you never want to mess with forearm tightness because when the second I hear forearm tightness, I'm like, that's going to lead to Tommy John at some point, isn't it? Because I just, anything to do with your arm, your elbow, I was like, oh, this this can't be good. But it seems like it's it's very positive that it's just tightness. He had to get shut down for a couple days and just slowly work his way back. And this is his first year, you know, his first spring training with the Boston Red Sox. He's been in the minors and he did come up last year, but this is the first time that he's really going to be a major league baseball starter or a long inning relief guy, depending on where they end up putting him. But, and he's using, he's using pitches that he's not used to throwing. He's using them more frequently. So I think this thing was bound to happen. Better to happen now at the beginning of spring training than in the season, if he's having a really strong season and then you lose him. And then you're like, crap, how long is he out? Could this be, is it day to day? Is it week to week? Is this month to month? But thankfully, at least right now, we don't need to think about that. So they're both on the right track. And that's that's good to see. It's unclear if Bayo also will be ready for opening day. Kind of like Whitlock, Cora has alluded to that probably not. But stranger things have happened. And then we have to talk about the World Baseball Classic because I'm having so much fun watching this tournament and watching the highlights from Twitter, watching the fans react on Twitter. It is so fun. It's very fun baseball. It's competitive. The crowds are electric. The crowds are having so much fun. And I think that's what makes just the the user experience, the watcher experience so much more enjoyable too when you know these fans are just going bananas the entire game. It is so much fun. 
and the Red Sox are well represented, but two players who have stuck out for their respective teams are Mazataka Yoshida and Yu Chang. They are having themselves quite the tournament, if I do say so myself. So Yoshida gave Japan their first lead of the game on Saturday morning. It was in Japan's eventual win over the Czech Republic. He went two for three with three RBI. He was also hit by a pitch and he had a double. The entire series in the the three games that he's played so far, Yoshida is a five for eight with nine RBI, two walks, a double. He's, He's doing good. He's having a great time over there. And we're also seeing the power that the, the scouts and the scouting reports have talked about since he signed with the Red Sox. So I think it's just a lot of positivity around Yoshida. And John Morosi, when he was on the show with us, talked about Yoshida and how he's, you know, he's still going to be dealing with major league pitching and that this could help him acclimate to major league baseball. So I do think that we should be optimistic about what we're seeing. Like, yes, it's the World Baseball Classic. Yes, it's Yoshida. And you know, he's playing where he's comfortable. He's playing with teammates he's played with for a long time. If he can translate what he's doing in the World Baseball Classic to the regular season with the Red Sox in his first MLB season, the Red Sox are going to look like geniuses for picking him up. And I I want him to do very well in this in in MLB. I think that there will be an adjustment period. But I mean, he's looking really, really good. And he's looked strong in spring training. There has been some times that he struggled a little bit at the plate. But this is why we have spring training to get everyone kind of acclimated. And if he starts April in a slump, I don't think it's going to last very long, but very, very positive what we're seeing from him, especially in the World Baseball Classic and that power. He's got it. He has a lot of power and he is a lot of fun to watch. And then there's Yu Chang, who the Red Sox re-signed in the offseason or just before spring training. And he's having a great tournament, too. He's having a lot of fun. I don't know who's having more fun, him or Yoshida, but... Yu Chang hit a clutch game-tying home run against Italy. Eventually, Italy did lose. It was their first loss of the tournament, but Yu Chang helped kind of rally the team and tied the game with his home run. It was it was a towering home run. And the crowd, again, the crowds, I cannot get over how electric these crowds are. And, you know, the World Baseball Classic has not been played in six years. So you have a lot of fans who have been waiting for this tournament for so long to come back to see some of the best talent in baseball that you're ever going to see. And to see, you know, people representing your country, giving your country the lead. Oh, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like, you, please go look up these highlights because it's just so much fun. And it's I love how into the games these fans are. It gets me excited for baseball and it gets me excited to continue to watch these World Baseball Classic games because this is a really fun tournament. But Yu Chang was not done against Italy. After they won, they played their next game against the Netherlands, and he hit a grand slam. That ball was very much gone. It was hit to center field. It was it was a beauty, if I do say so myself. And he ended up going two for three in the win over the Netherlands. Fun. A lot of fun baseball. I, I keep saying fun, and I'm, I'm just having a lot of fun watching this competitive baseball. Watching, like I said, some of these best baseball players in the world representing their countries. This is just very, very entertaining baseball. I'm having a lot of fun watching it. I hope you are too. Thank you so much for tuning into this Sunday special of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox right here on YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. The Odyssey app, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast is where you can find us. You can also find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy. And then me, La 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 Lauren, Three Laws, Lauren with four R's. Be sure to check out all the other shows across the Locked On Network. Locked On Diamondbacks, Locked On Phillies, Locked On Yankees. Everyone is in baseball mode right now. We are so excited to continue to bring you baseball content Monday through Friday. We will be back this week. We'll be back five days a week bringing you all the news updates, World Baseball Classic updates, everything in between. But thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball because you can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcast and right here on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We'll see you Monday. We'll see you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We are ready for Red Sox baseball. Hopefully more good news. Hopefully I can keep bringing you good news, keep these good vibes rolling, and get us into the regular season on a high note. Until next time, we'll end this show how we always do. Let's go Red Sox.